Welcome to Mindfulness Manufacturing. My name is Trevor Blondiel. Spending 25 years in manufacturing, I discovered the real impact we have on turnover, communication, and the ability to manage change is how we show up. That's the essence of emotional intelligence. In each episode, we bring a guest or message to expand your skills, engage your people, and grow your organization. So let's jump in. We have talked many times on this podcast about how we show up, how that impacts on how people feel, and how that determines how they can engage with us. And often that first impression is important. And people's impression of you might be wrong. Like, yeah, they just don't get me. You know, that, 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 that's their issue. But it's real to them. And you got to deal with it as if it was accurate. And I've learned more about this through my friend, Sylvie DeGiusto. And she talks about how your image is like a thousand pieces. And the only person that can control it is you. And she is a master on the importance of managing perception in the workplace like manufacturing. And she is Austrian by birth, French in her heart, Italian in her kitchen, German in her work ethic, American by choice, a speaker, author, and mom and i love her exotic accent sylvie welcome thank you so much for having me trevor i'm excited to be for, with you for three reasons do you want to know them yes first it is impressive how much homework you did in preparation for this podcast not everybody <laughs> does that so thank you very much for that <laughs> second it is such an honor to speak with you a true expert in connections and third manufacturing is one of my favorite industries to speak at because we have a lot of work to do there <laughs> and the so thank you very much for having me and inviting me to, for this conversation. Yeah, there, there's so many areas that we do need help, Sylvie. And we get focused in, in manufacturing. There's so many tasks, like it is things related and we need to get this done. And often we want to communicate that as quickly as possible. And and sometimes this is with people that we don't interact with all the time, but it's, it's many different departments, many different areas go into that. And what we don't always think about is how does that first impression, because I don't even think about it that much. I think, okay, well, it's about relationships and that takes time. Uh, but talk to me about that first moment. So um, there are different studies out there with different uh, results, obviously. But uh, one of the studies that I use for my work, for example, showcases that we make 11 major decisions, up to 11 decisions about each other during the first seven seconds. Ooh. Now, don't take those numbers <laughs> too, too seriously, right? This is just a guidance and should give you a feel of what is happening. It could be four decisions. It could be a millisecond. Online, it happens faster than it happens in real life. And obviously, the occasion matters too. We make different decisions when we are in a dating uh, situation <laughs> than when we are on site um, at a location as a manufacturer, for example. But um, it should show you that um, we all do it. And it has nothing to do with the fact if you are a good human being, a bad human being, if you want to do it or not. It is simple brain performance that happens uh, automatically. And while my topic is first impressions, the first impression itself matters actually less than what happens afterwards, because afterwards, very powerful sources are working either against you or for you. And those sources are called unconscious biases. Those unconscious biases are built on years of experience, past experience that we had, lessons that we have learned in the past, and we are heavily influenced by them. So one, for example, is confirmation bias. Confirmation bias makes sure in our brain that we find confirmation for our first initial opinion yeah. about somebody. Our brain just wants to be right. It doesn't yeah. want to be wrong. So it ignores everything that goes against our first initial opinion about somebody. Anchoring bias makes sure that we anchor that information in our brain and cannot let go. Bandwagon effect, another unconscious bias. If somebody else says the same, we just jump on that bandwagon because oh, yeah. it's all right. We must be right to do too, right? We know there are around 185 biases that influence our decisions every single day, every moment. 
And most of the time we run on autopilot. We don't make decisions rationally. We, we trust our gut feeling and we trust those unconscious biases. Mm. And um, yeah, so that, that's what what is happening during those first moments. It's interesting. Just yesterday I was meeting with a manager in manufacturing and we were just talking about you know how we kind of box ourselves mm-hmm. or box others, more importantly, to say, oh, this is this type of person. And he was talking to someone that he had he just getting to know and and um, they were talking about wine. And he says, yeah, I see you're, you're a type of a Chardonnay type person. Yeah. He's, he's like, well, I'm not. Like, wh- why? I, I just picked that because of this moment. And, yeah. But like, why does that say that? And, and I've done that before. I'm like, oh, yeah, you... And I thought, well, that's a good way to build connection. But then if you kind of like are making this first impression and then you just kind of label that person, is that something we should stay away from and be just more be more curious? Well, absolutely. For yourself, the best thing to do is to constantly remind yourself that you are influenced by your own biases and step back and try your best not to run down that path and not realize what actually influences your decisions. But you never can fully do that, right? We are all biased. You are biased and so am I. And so is every mm-hmm. listener. So when it comes now to your industry and to your listeners, manufacturing is a little bit special and is a very difficult uh, industry to handle for the following reasons. Uh, people have expectations, right? Over the years, we have learned how a lawyer should look like, behave like, communicate. If I now want you to think of a lawyer, probably hmm, most of you think, first of all, of a man and not a woman. (laughs) Yes. Second, probably the lawyer wears something like a navy or charcoal gray suit. Chances are high with pinstripes, a red Bordeaux tie, a white shirt and black shoes. Mm. That's just how years of experience have taught us how somebody who works, for example, in uh, law should look like. The same is true for banking. The same is true for childcare. So there are very clear expectations. Manufacturing is a little bit different because there is such a big gap between the people on site, right? So at mm-hmm. the location working and the leaders in the organization uh, that handle those people on site. Yeah. And so it's a constant flip-flop and a balancing act between how do I appear, behave, communicate with people on site, but on the other hand, realizing there are millions of dollars possibly on the table, and how do I appear, behave, and communicate with my clients? Because the moment children or money is involved, big amounts of money, for example, trust is one of the most important criteria that people instantly want to uh, experience in those first milliseconds. And if they don't feel that you are a trustworthy person, then confirmation bias, anchoring bias, and all the other biases are working against you. And on top of that, as sad as it is, manufacturing is still a very male-dominated industry, right? So there is a difference between industries where we have mixed um, employers from Mm -hmm. all sorts of genders or where we are very male uh, dominated. And so, yeah, you are just special and unique. (laughs) Yeah. The recent study I saw that we were about 25 to 28% uh, females in the industry, and it's really not growing. Mm -hmm. So if, if there's any advice for women growing in manufacturing, because for my personal career, some of the best feedback I've gotten in coaching has been from women colleagues. Mm -hmm. uh, And it's just a different, it's a different insight into areas. And it's kind of like, wow, do I really come across like that? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I've gotten some really good pivots and and, because that that who I I really am Mm -hmm. wasn't always being portrayed in that way. And that's where I got some of that coaching from. And and so for women in manufacturing, is there something that they need to do different in these first impressions? Um, Yes and no. So uh, first of all, for for many women in manufacturing, I want you to know that confidence is your best designer, right? There is very often women in male uh, dominated industry reach out to me and they think they have to adjust and appear be behave and communicate like the boys. And that's the wrong thing to do. 
Okay. You just should be yourself and, in fact, put your agenda into the background. So if I now ask you, Trevor, stretch, hold out your hand to the front, okay. all the way to the front and every listener, right? right? And this would be your agenda. And now take the other hand and hold it not as far to the front, just a little yeah. bit behind. And yeah. this would be your expertise and skills and the added value that you bring to the table. What I ask women is to make the switch, bring the skills and the expertise and the added value fully to the table right? And yeah. fully to the forefront. And don't even let them think about if you are a woman or a man mm -hmm. or whatever um, gender you identify for. So um, don't make it a topic, just to showcase your excellence and your superpowers a little bit louder than mm -hmm. possibly men have to do. Yeah. And, and I see that, Sylvie. And then if I'm working with women leaders in manufacturing, and it's kind of, I'll ask the questions like, so who knows that you did that? Mm -hmm. Right. And, mm -hmm. and like, and how, how are you communicating that? Cause that's, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Uh, and there seems to be yeah less intention. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like that fact of, you know, there's a difference between saying, Hey, uh, did you know I have an MBA or I'm an engineer? Like, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like, hey, I see uh, that we're getting some repeat faults over here. We got, you know, Sarah over here um, troubleshooting and we've we've identified the root cause. I mean, that that's what we're talking about. Yes, yes, yes. It's about your skills, your experiences, your expertise, your thought leadership, the problems that you solve, and especially the unspoken problems that you solve. What are the pain points you really can help with, with uh, customers? Um, in the manufacturing industry. So if there's a, there's going to be people driving into a manufacturing plant right now and they're thinking, mm -hmm. okay, now I'm thinking about my first seven seconds. Yes. Uh, and if, if they, if you're in the car with them, mm -hmm. what, what are you, what are you saying? What do you want them to be more mindful of? Uh, of five elements, as easy as five elements, right? <laughs> so let's quickly walk you through those five elements, which all I call the A, B, C, D, E of your initial imprint. Your A, stands for your appearance. Mm. Like it or not, we are visual creatures. We just like to look. And that's actually mm -hmm. what's happening first. You know, you show up on site and people look at you. You don't even have the chance very often to say smart things in those first seven seconds. You just yeah. show up. So what do people see? And that starts with the suit you are born in, your mm. body, your body image. Are you tall? Are you short? Are you overweight? Are you underweight? Do you take care of your body or not? Does it look healthy? Does it look in shape? Yeah. Then hopefully you cover it somehow with clothes, right? <laughs> and what do your clothes say about you? The style, the fit, the brand, the quality, the colors, and so on. And uh, your accessories, your jewelry, your hair, your makeup, and so on, everything that we see. We know that 90% of information gets transmitted in our brains visually. Our brains are actually quite lazy. They don't like to read. They don't like to write. They don't like to think. So they take a shortcut through the eyes. So today, look into the mirror mm -hmm. and just look at yourself. Step back and say, is, for example, trust a word that you instantly see? Or is it something else? What do you see? But to make it very clear, looking good is great, but it's not enough. That's why we're going to jump next into the B for behavior. For example, your attitude. In those first moments, how do you approach clients or team members as a leader? Your attitude speaks before you open your mouth. We all know it speaks louder than any words. Is it positive? Is it negative? Do you have charisma? We all know people who just walk into the room and we feel that they are there because they have charisma. They stand out. What about your Ethics and morals. How do you uh, behave? What decisions do you make? What is your moral compass, even if nobody is watching? How about your diplomacy and courtesy? Uh, do you know business protocols? Um, how about um, you probably work with people from all over the world? What about your cross-cultural uh, cross sensitivity? What about uh, inclusiveness? So those first moments where you behave with somebody uh, say a lot about your uh, mindset, your ethics, your morals, and how you would like to connect and interact. And then you're going to say something. So the yeah. C's for communication. I, and I, to your surprise, 
communication, the most important part of communicating is actually not speaking. It is listening. Mm -hmm. How good of a listener are you at the very beginning? Right? I'm listening, Sylvia. I'm just checking something on my phone here. You keep on going. Yes. <laughs> it's kind of like, no, it's... no, you're not listening, right? <laughs> I'm thinking of the person, like this this leader, this one plan, and, and he's the leader looking after the plant. He's like, first thing is like, not going to be a good day. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. I can't believe we just said that. That's so, right. But, but then people are kind of like, well, Trevor, it's just, it's just, what, what do I got to do? Do I got to put on a fake smile or whatever? Well, I'm like, well, here's what we know in manufacturing is that the first hour of your production mm -hmm. often dictates the rest of the day mm -hmm. uh, on how you perform. And then how, how we feel starting that first hour. Do we feel like we're going to hit target today? Like, do we have a vision to hit target? So that ties into that whole behavior. And so if I'm working with a leader and they're listening right now, and it's kind of like, yeah, but you know, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night and it's just kind of not me to kind of be that that person but yet they're the people they're the person that people are looking to uh, yeah. wh what do you say to that sylvie well first of all do the best you can just mm. approach every day with today i'm doing the best that i can that cannot always be the like best, best 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 version of yourself but just do the best you can none of us is perfect I make mistakes. I make mistakes in those first seven seconds oh, yeah. when I interact with others, but I'm always trying to approach it intentionally and at least do the best I can. And then second, as a leader, always be aware that you are leading by example. People are looking up to you and they are following you. You are setting a tone. You are setting a tone with your appearance, your behavior, and your communication. If you are not setting a positive and a great and an impressive tone, nobody will follow you. Chances are little that somebody uh, will take a turn uh, and um, interact differently if you don't lead by example. Yeah, and I, I can see the intention. I think what sometimes too is the authenticity and and is this really Trevor when he starts a meeting or kicks a shift off? Mm -hmm. uh, but I love the fact of do your, what I hear is do your best intentionally. Yes. And, and this is the mindfulness part. Like, it's like, why did you want to call this mindfulness manufacturing? Because I'm not looking for everybody to be super positive and that's not real either. But are you intentional that if you are leading this, this team in this manufacturing plant, uh, how, how you show, how your intentions are alone. You don't have mm -hmm. to be this perfect leader, no. but, but how, can you just have the intention of like, mm -hmm. hey, I know right now consciously that how I enter this room and this impression of the first time everybody gets to see me today is going to impact everyone else. So mm -hmm. that's 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 something just gold right there for the listener takeaway. Thank you. Thank you. But you know, and, uh, two things. Uh, first of all, your reputation or your brand or your image, however you call it, mm -hmm. is not what people tell you to your face. It mm -hmm. is what they say behind your Ooh. back. What you mean? It's different. Yeah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> if you don't control to your best ability how you show up, you give the control fully to others, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever they make out of that information. And second, just because you mentioned authenticity, I'm going to say something that you're not going to like. Uh -oh. Authenticity is a lie. Oh, say more. Yeah, I know that's tough to hear, but here's the reason why I say that. We all play roles. Every single day, we play different roles. You play a different role as a husband or a wife than you play as a parent. You play a different role as a parent than you play at work. You play a different role at work as a leader than you play as a leader in your community. Just imagine you would behave with your husband or with your wife like you behave with your team members or vice versa. Mm. We all know how we get in trouble. Just Ooh, imagine yeah. you uh, appear, behave and communicate with your children the same way like you communicate with your team members. Authenticity exists but only in your specific roles, right? You can show up authentically as a leader, but your authentically approach as a parent is quite different. And so I just believe that we all play roles and no matter in which role we are in, we should do our best. Just show up as your best authentic version in that role. Okay. So that, that now I kind of understand it a little bit towards the end there. Mm -hmm. 
be your best authentic self in that role because I'm not a different person when I go home exactly. to when I go to work. So mm-hmm. is it just is it just pulling on your own core values and who you are and anchoring in those in respect to your audience, whether that's your yes. family or whether that's your leadership group or your client? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look, in one of my sessions, I let leaders identify their three core values. The three values and beliefs they show up by every single day. They are non-negotiables, something that is so important uh, to them that if that value is not um, uh, achieved, they wouldn't do the work. They would say no because it's non-negotiable to them. And those values are the same in your personal life than in your professional life. They just look and feel and sound differently. Mm. I can appear, behave and communicate based on my values at home with my family very differently than in my role as a speaker on stage and you in your role as a leader in manufacturing because the expectations and the audiences are different. That doesn't mean that I have changed. I just deliver my values to two different audiences in different ways. I have not heard said that way that's beautiful sylvie i like that that's going to be in the sh- that's going to be in the show notes <laughs> perfect perfect all right where i i just I, I took you off the path here where are we in the abcs Yes. Um, so we were at the C communication. We started with active listening. And then um, obviously you also say things without saying things, your body language, your facial expressions. And once you open your mouth, we experience your voice. Your voice is a very powerful tool. It's like an instrument that you play every single day. But none of us really learns how to play that instrument. We just play it, Right. And then Absolutely. what you say. So, for example, we know that the first 11 words of every conversation are the most important ones. People are going to remember you for the first 11 words that you say. Mm. Most of us waste them with something like, how are you doing? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's so it's sunny out wrong. today. It's pretty nice. Yeah, and, and there is nothing wrong about asking, how are you doing today? If you're really interested in the answer and if you're a yeah. good active listener, but people won't remember you. So how about the idea you go onto LinkedIn and find out about something about the person you are trying to meet or you look into mm. the news? Maybe there is something positive about their company. If you show up and you instantly show that you are prepared, that is way more impressive than how are you doing? And then it's uh, obviously about your written communication and that leads us into the D. And the D is a little bit of a sweet spot of mine because every single day you, Trevor, And everybody else on that podcast has around 3,000 contact points in average. You are in contact with 3,000 people every single day. Now you might wonder, uh, how does that work, right? But here's the reality. Most contact points nowadays happen online in the digital space. You send out emails every single day. And even if you send that email to just one person, you really don't know if it got forwarded and forwarded and forwarded. Uh And right now, somebody is making the decision to reach out to that manufacturing partner or not, right? People Google your name. What do they find? What is on page one on Google or your social media profiles? Now you might think my social media profiles, they are personal, they are private. But I'm telling you, if there are two <laughs> things that don't belong together, it's private and the internet, obviously. <laughs> right? They look at your Facebook profile, your header, your profile picture, what you post, what you share, what you um, endorse, what you like. You leave behind a mm. digital footprint. And unfortunately, not just consciously with your actions, also unconsciously. How often did you have a friend where you thought, how many hours does he, she, or they spend online? Don't they have a job? Because obviously (laughs) they are just posting all the time. How often did you see somebody who was not aware how to use um, online features accurately? And you thought, what? It is 2023 and you don't you still don't know how to use oh, this yeah. platform or this feature. So that there are a lot of brain. unconscious, yeah, unconscious messages that we send. So unfortunately, nowadays, your digital footprint comes first. It's not your appearance, not your behavior, not your communication. If you have to clean up anywhere first, then it's your digital space because everything single day 
Um, we know we have around an average 3,000 contact points of somebody exploring us online or not exploring us online. Even if you don't have a digital footprint, people nowadays think, oh, what's wrong? What is Trevor hiding? Why do I not find anything about him? And last but not least, to round it quickly up, there is your E4 environment, the environment you show up when how does your office look like what about your family what are they doing your network of friends what about the car you show up at location and on site mm, is it I clean what brand it is everything that we surround ourselves with all the other factors like where do you go on vacation what do your hobbies say about you which news do you look so a lot of other factors in your environment that also influence how people perceive you. Now, clearly, you can't control all of them. But going back to our initial conversation, do your best to at least control some of them, those who are in control of you. Your appearance, for example, is something that you can fully control and it's easy to control. Your behavior, a little bit more difficult already because we all know how long it uh, takes to change a behavior. But if you don't get started, you will <laughs> never get where you want. I love the whole just intention, right? Uh, if it's a behavior, it's an intention. If it's an appearance, your appearance is as beautiful as it is. The, the part that I think about more is that like, do you take care of your appearance? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And because if you take care of, if you don't take care of yourself, mm -hmm. how can you take care of me? Yes, and, exactly. And, and you could do my keynote. I'm, I'm so fascinated because that's what I always <laughs> say, especially as a leader. <laughs> Self-care is so important because people have the assumption, if you don't take care of yourself, you don't have the ability or capability to take care of others. Yeah, that, that's where the appearance, it does count. And, and it is important and we can say that people shouldn't judge, but it's, it's like you said, it's that subconscious aspect that, and Brene Brown will talk about that. We're just, we can't help but judge, right? And, yes. and we don't want to, but that is, that is part of it, whether uh, we like it or not. I got one quote here from you that I wanted to read before we tie up here through the cultivation of emotional intelligence that starts with how we perceive our, our customer and, and fellow employees and people and ourselves. And we can interrupt unconscious thought patterns that interfere with good decision-making and choose the behaviors that serve our most favorable and desirable outcomes. And that's, we are about outcomes in manufacturing. So it's like, I had to kind of read that and, and mm -hmm. I wanted to leave the listeners with that. And what, what do you want to leave the listeners with today, Sylvie? Well, what you just said, thank you very much for <laughs> quoting this. The best way is to break those thought patterns, to stand out, to go the extra mile, to do something surprising, something they didn't expect mm -hmm. and easier to control their perception of you and all the decisions that they make based on that perception. Be amazed with Sylvie DiGiusto. I love it. And how do people follow you? We're going to put some links in there. I can tell you from personal experience, uh, you only need to go to our website and you're going to be enthralled with just excitement and curiosity. And I just did a survey on kind of how I show up. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, and you got some books out. What, what do you want us to see? Ah, oh, thank you very much for asking this the kind of you. Yeah, stop by my website, silvidichusto.com. And thank you for putting that not so easy name and link into your show notes <laughs> uh, for your listeners. And if you add a slash audit, then you can go to a free perception uh, audit, 10 minutes of time, answering a few questions, and I will tell you how the world perceives you. That doesn't mean that you are like that, so make sure to remember that. It just tells you what people think of you when they think of you. I am super excited and thrilled to have a new book coming out uh, in the next week. It's called Discover Your Fair Advantage. And what we just discussed, for example, I will show you how you can identify your values, your beliefs, your experiences, your natural talents, your skills, your competences to be better able to communicate your unique selling points and fair mm. advantage. And I'm very active on social media. So wherever you are, no matter if it's Instagram, Facebook, 
TikTok, YouTube, please make <laughs> sure to connect and let me know that you uh, heard this interview at Trevor's uh, podcast because I'm so excited to be here. And thank you very much again for having me. Right on. And by the time this releases, I'll have the link to your book in the show notes and I will have read it by then. Uh, so uh, it, it, it is helping me. This conversation helps me as one of the gifts of being a host. And I know it'll, uh, in manufacturing, we need more Sylvie. So thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you very much for having me. Always remember. Remember, you have seven seconds, make them count. Hey folks, appreciate you taking the time to join us today. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with someone. Haven't subscribed yet? Do it now. Remember, if you want results, the key is increasing your awareness of how you show up.